Okay. So uh, uh, the goal of today's demo is just to give you an idea of how to transition from uh, the generic uh, um, Loomis method of drawing heads to a, a real figure, okay, doing a real portrait, okay? And um, I'm telling you now that the, really the only, uh, uh, the only thing that will make a portrait a portrait is if you start doing measurements, okay? If you start uh, uh, literally going in and slowing down a little bit, making sure that your structure is correct, okay? So the Loomis method, just like the schema that we learned at the beginning of the semester, is a way that you can start. It's a starting point. Uh, it's a generic kind of a human being. Um, uh, and what we want to do is transition from that generic to the precise and, and more accurate and uh, 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 the, having the, something that has the character of that person, okay? So all these rules that, uh, that I've given you, now you have to test them, okay? You have to ask yourself, all right, so Leo says that from the brow to the bottom of the nose, the same as from the bottom of the nose to the chin. Is that true? Is that true for this model, okay? Leo says that the head is five eyes wide. Is that true for this model? How does this person differ from the quote unquote normal from the schema? Okay, that's your whole point here. Um, <clears throat> a portrait can take a very long time uh, if you're doing it right. And, and it takes often a lot of reworking and, and, and redoing, okay? Um, do not expect a portrait to look like, uh, 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 you know, that, that exact person your first time around. You may need to do a couple of passes. You might need to, uh, in, in my last one, I had to fix her eye like three times. And then I had to fix her ear, okay? Um, uh, I imagine that at some level, you know, at some point, you can, you can just draw with your eyes closed and you can do a portrait. But I'm not there yet, okay? And I don't know how many of you are, so um, don't be hard on yourself if you can't get it perfect, okay? The goal is that we are continuing to improve and we're getting better every time that we go through this process. All right. Um, so we're gonna start with, uh, uh, I'm gonna start with a, a 2B charcoal because I like to draw lightly. Teresa, can I have you pull your uh, hair back over your ear? Well, I did it different this time. I know. Um, I was trying to hide this big sore on my ear. <laughs> I didn't see a big sore on your right ear. There. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I won't draw it. I don't. I don't okay. see it. I don't see it. Okay. Uh, uh, it's nice to have that ear uh, okay. showing. It, it just <laughs> adds a little more character. Okay. So. <clears throat> now, is this the shot you wanted to be? Yes. No, I don't want it to be the back of my head. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so let's do that. Um, I guess I could do this, maybe that. Okay, I think we're okay. So uh, I'm gonna start with the Loomis method. I'm gonna draw a little bit larger than life size, considerably larger than life size, apparently. Um, <laughs> Uh, and the reason for that is I want to be able to draw some details, okay? Um, uh, so that you can see from, from where you're at. Now, she is not uh, facing me directly, which means I cannot do center line, center line. I have to draw the, that center line as if it is going around this sphere, okay? I have to kind of uh, imagine that center line going around the sphere. And then I have to imagine this center line as if it is going around the sphere as well. And one thing that you can do is you can check the angle between the brow and the top of the ear, and you'll notice the angle at which that arc has to come around. Okay, and I can, well, I don't see the ear on the other side, but you could also check the angle between the nose and the ear. Uh, and, and you can see that, that curvature, uh, um, so that, that sense of curvature has to be there. 
Um, <clears throat> from here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, figure out where her, uh, the center of her face is, bring that down. I'm going to go ahead and chop off the sides of her head. Not literally. I heard you laughing. <laughs> okay, we're snickering over there. All right, and we're going to straighten that out, straighten out those lines. Uh, what that does is it, is it gives me uh, more of a generic uh, head shape. Now, next thing to do uh, in particular is going to be to find out how wide is the face versus how tall is the face. And since the width is the shorter length, I'm going to go ahead and measure from the edge of the eye all the way to the edge of the um, the other edge of the face and of the head, and then I'm going to measure the, the, that compared to the height. So when I measure it, I notice that it is uh, pretty much one and a half times. So the width here is one and a half times. So I'm going to try and make that proportion work out for me at this point, and then we'll go from there. So if I see that this is my width of head, I want this to be one and a half times. Nope, that's too much. So it's got to be, if that's a half, wait, I'm sorry. Now I'm getting confused. Okay, so this is one, and this has got to be one and a half. Ah, <laughs> what do I want to do? Okay, so that's a half, and then I'm going to come down here. Okay, so we're going to go over here, one and a half times. Okay, and that gets me the overall size of her head. Now, um, I think I may have to move this up, and I may have to move it up here, okay? The reason for that is uh, uh, the, the hair is kind of contributing to that, uh, to that length, and, and this is not going to be the front of her face. So let me do another measurement. I'm going to measure from the eyes, center of the eyes to the bottom of the chin, and I'm going to see that it is essentially the same, uh, perhaps a little taller uh, here. So if I look at her brow and I know that the center of her eyes is going to be here, I, I can't make it this long. So if I do that, and that now, now I'm getting myself even more confused. Okay. I want the width, but I don't want the height. Um, okay, the height's got to be taller there. So let's see if this is the same now. This should be the width here. Should be one and a half times, is that right? Yep, there we go. Okay, one and a half times. All right, so I chopped off a little bit here, but I had to add a little bit there. I need to place the brow in the right spot, okay, including the hair. That's, that, was the, uh, that was the rigmarole. That was what was getting me, uh, um, getting my vision here a little bit uh, skewed. So from there, I can go ahead and figure out my eye sockets. To do the eye sockets, I'm going to start with the glabella, okay? Right underneath the brow, uh, really close to the brow, is, is the glabella, uh, which is that essentially that shape right, right there between the eyes. I can go ahead and figure out the eye socket. Uh, the eye socket is typically hexagonal, but uh, it's not a perfect hexagon, okay? It's obviously a little longer. And I can tell already I'm going to have to chop. I didn't chop off anything from this side, did I? Nope, I didn't. So let me go ahead and do that. OK. Um, and then we'll come. So a hexagon, I, I think, is a good shape for that, uh, uh, for that uh, eye socket. Now, what I've, what I've done here in, in lighting, Teresa, you didn't see me when I was lighting her, um, I created something called Rembrandt lighting. 
And uh, uh, Rembrandt lighting is, uh, well, named after the famous <laughs> Rembrandt, right? But essentially what it means is that there is a little bit of, a little triangle of light on this cheek uh, on the shadow side of the face, okay? Um, so that is Rembrandt lighting. Now Rembrandt lighting is uh, quite good for uh, drawing uh, in charcoal because it really does give you a sense of that chiaroscuro. Um, however, that may not be the, the most suitable lighting for your model. You might want some butterfly lighting or you might want uh, short lighting or broad lighting. And I do recommend that you uh, uh, look up some of these um, lighting scenarios in, uh, uh, on, on YouTube, perhaps, okay? Um, by doing that, uh, you'll, you'll train yourself. You will um, understand a little bit more about lighting, especially if you want to do portraits, okay? That's going to be uh, really important. Uh, I was a photographer. I had the, the luck, I guess, to be a, a photographer, photography student at one point, and I learned about lighting. So I can tell you things like uh, Rembrandt lighting and butterfly lighting and broad lighting and short lighting. But without taking the extra time to go into that, um, I'm afraid that's going to be of no use to you. So you've got to take some time, and you're going to have to study those things uh, if you want to create more interesting, uh, uh, well-lit uh, images. As far as charcoal is concerned, uh, having this Rembrandt lighting or uh, a broad um, structure of, of, uh, in, the, in the shadow, having a lot of shadow will help to create a more interesting drawing for you. So as you see, I am taking a lot of measurements here and I'm checking those measurements, making sure that they all, they all fit. And this is kind of what we're starting with here. This is my structure. I have added a little bit of shadow. I'll go ahead and continue that. Uh, if my hair is going to be out here, this is going to be uh, uh, space tone or background. The lips are how far from the nose? Anybody remember? No, half is half is wrong. Was it one third from the nose of the chin? Yep, about a third of the way down from the chin, from the from the nose. Okay, all right. Half is uh, what most people would assume, right? I mean, it just it's just kind of the easy answer, and that's what most people will draw. Um, but yep, you need to know it's about a third of the way down. Okay. The nasolabial furrow is starting right up above the um, nostrils. Comes around here, around the mouth. For the lower lip, I'm just going to draw the shadow under the lower lip. I'm not going to draw the lower lip yet. Cast shadow here, form shadow on the chin. And it seems I'm doing all this with my 6B, which is good. Um, I thought this was a 2B, but it sure seems like a 6B in my hands. So we will, we're continuing. Since I'm massing in, I might as well go ahead and just keep my 6B in my hand. Ear shape. Again, making sure where it ends, check that angle from bottom of nose to bottom of ear. Yep, it works. Top of brow to top of ear. Yep, it works. Okay, a little more rounded maybe. 
lot of space here I'm seeing on the drawing. I'm not seeing a lot of space there. So I think this was an issue I had with uh, the first drawing I, I did, is I made the distance from the side of the face to the edge of the eye too short. Yeah, okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna measure from the ear, the inside of the ear to the edge of the eye. And I see that that is essentially a little bit bigger than one eye width, so this is no good. Yeah? Close, but no good. Let's make that a little bit wider. So that is essentially, I think that should be better. It's such a small little increment that you've got to measure, but I think we're okay now. All right, so, and, and what you'll find is that a portrait can vary by millimeters and, and, and not be correct, you know? Um, whereas a figure tends to uh, be a little bit more generalized, but when we're looking at someone's face, by golly, everyone can tell whether or not it looks like that person or not. So the only, um, saving grace is that when people look at the drawing you did, they usually don't look at the person at the same time. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, neck right here. Whoops. Make that go in the right angle. Strong dark back here, right under the right under the ear. I always find a, a strong dark in that area. Sometimes I'll exaggerate it. Uh, there's hair coming out here. And neck. Neck is coming from the chin down into the pit of the neck and over the shoulder. Shoulder is at this angle. Okay, and then we've got the sweater. The shoulder's a little lower. A lot of hair over here. Uh, she's got white hair, but uh, uh, we're, we're going to give it a value, right? We're going to assign a value to it. Make that a little taller. And then this shoulder's coming out. Perhaps over here. The sweater is darker than the hair. It's good that she's got a dark sweater because that's going to help me when I'm ready to mass in. I'm just about there. I'm creating a little gradient in the background or, or at least a little bit of value in the background. I'm not worried so much about a gradient because um, the background is a small part of the, the whole drawing. Okay. Where is that hairline? So, I mean, I could measure here, right? From the top of her head to the hairline. Is that the same as, it's a little bit shorter than brow to hairline. Okay, so top of hair to hairline, a little shorter than brow to hairline. So I can put that hairline here, just above the center of the eye. Check that angle too. Maybe that's helpful. Yep. Okay. That. And that. Okay. So I'm not totally convinced here. Uh, there's some proportions that are giving me some issues, but I feel good enough right now to go ahead and mask this in. I have not scraped, I've not uh, darkened any outlines. 
All my outlines have been drawn really softly. Um, so I'm not, nothing is set in stone at this point, yeah? Everything is still very much flexible and can be changed. All right, so shadow shape, light shape. And that means we are ready for glazing. glazing. The whole idea behind glazing is that you want to get rid of any streakiness, right? You want to have enough charcoal on the surface to give the half tone or give the light area some value that you can actually erase out of. Um, all right, so now it's time to fine tune my shapes here. I think maybe that nose uh, has got to shrink a little bit. Let's see. Let's measure again. A little more even. Hmm. Maybe that's not it. Let's see, what else could it be? Some things to look for is the um, edge of the eye is usually even with uh, the nostril and the center of the eye is usually even with the lip. Okay, that, that seems to work. Let me just continue drawing here. Something will catch my attention at some point and I'll have to fix it and that's okay. The whole idea behind drawing is that you just keep working until you get an idea for what it is that you need to fix. So now that uh, now that we're back and I had a little bit of a break, let's see if I have any moment of Satori here and I, if I can figure out what I did wrong. That looks right. Sometimes it's the distance from the nose to the cheek that could be the issue. Let's see if that... Jaw. The jaw, remember, is going to be uh, usually located behind the mouth. Well, the corner of the jaw, I should say, not the jaw itself, yes. It's located behind the mouth. Maybe making that a little bit shorter. That seems a little bit better. But now I got to move the mouth up a little bit. And the nostrils are higher than the, uh, the septum in this case. Give the nose a little shadow. here, I think. We'll see how that goes. I think I'm okay with that. Um, 
I think I already told you I could spend a week or two weeks on a portrait and still not feel great about it. But at some point we gotta we gotta say it's finished. Uh, here's the um, the anti helix. almost coming out on top of the, the helix. And the tragus really up next to the side of the face there. Okay. So let's go back to our eyes here. sure I get that spacing correct again. Don't want to lose that. Here's where the eyelid rolls back into the eye socket. And uh, when I'm looking at the eyelid itself, I'm looking for maybe three lines. See, the thing about curves is that they're difficult to draw and 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 if you if you're trying to draw a curve uh, it's difficult to capture it correctly so if you break that curve down into a couple of straight lines you can capture it more uh, uh, more easily so by by taking these eyes and breaking it breaking them down into um, straight lines rather than drawing curved lines, I can be more accurate, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that's a little better. The eye rolling in right here. The brow. Okay, let me go ahead and restate the, uh, the shadow. Draw that shadow shape one more time. Cast shadow here on this side. The Rembrandt lighting right here, that's going to be a light area. Here the shadow is really thin under the under this side of the nose and then as we go around the muzzle it broadens out it, it comes down a little bit more sharply All right and let's go back to the nasal labial furrow Let's find the center of those lips. I can press a little darker now because this is a sit core, right? And by drawing that sit core dark, I can make the, uh, the area of the upper lip look like reflected light. The far side of the mouth is going to be a lot shorter than this side of the mouth because it's foreshortening a lot quicker than um, than anything else because it's going away. Uh, it, it's a it's a lot rounder than the head, right? Uh, have you ever taken a bite out of a sandwich and noticed how big your your mouth opening is? It's not really a very big. If you take a mm, nice big bite out of a sandwich, you look at it. It's wow, it's pretty short uh, a, a short radius on that. Go ahead and get a little core shadow here, core shadow here, core shadow 
on the bottom of the nose, coarse shadow on the brows, although most of that eye is in the light. Let's go ahead and redraw the shadow on the neck. Uh, the nice thing about the, the neck shadow is that it makes the face float forward, right? So even though this area of the neck is in the light, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shade it in as well because it will help the head pop forward. I'll just give that a little bit of a value. I don't want it to become important. I want the neck to sit back. All right. Um, feeling good about the shadow shapes. I think I can continue. Uh, we'll draw the finish drawing the eyes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. The iris, pupil. Now, even though I don't see exactly what's going on back there, it's so dark. I can go ahead and suggest it. This is dark here. That whole eyelid is dark. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm going to find some of the darker half tones now. Just so uh, I'm, I'm getting myself ready here to do a little bit of blending, getting rid of some textures. I will make the background a little bit darker so I can let the hair stand out. for some blending and I can either use my hands or I can bring out the big guns the big guns it's almost like I'm doing a second glazing step here yeah I'm just smoothing out that texture in the shadow because I don't want the shadow to become important. I want the shadow to be secondary. It's just faster if I use my fingers. So the, this back edge of the hair, um, I want it to go away from me, right? So I'm going to blend that back edge of hair with the background a little bit. I don't want a very sharp edge there. I want to control my edge sharpness. And I really want to make my sharpest things be right here. This corner of light that's going to be coming forward. I'll try and make that the sharpest edge that I've got. And let everything else kind of be softened. softened. over that ear 
the ear shouldn't be the sharpest thing in the book, right? It should be kind of soft and blurry. Um, now I'm seeing a dark line on her forehead from a, a, one of those construction lines. So I can use my chamois to wipe that up. For the most part, that will get rid of it. If you've got any other construction lines, you can deal deal with that, deal that with the with chamois. And then if you need to darken it again, you can go ahead and just sort of reglaze that area a little bit. Okay. All right. Feel okay with the shadows. Um, they got a little too dark. I'm using my cloth here to wipe some of the shadow away. And then I'll come back in and punch up the core shadow again. The shape of the nose and that cast shadow is important. This cast shadow is important. This core shadow and the bottom plane of the nose. Okay, so let's start using my kneaded eraser now. And I'm going to start with the lights again right in here. Where are, where are my strongest lights? Uh, on the skin, the strongest light is probably going to be right here on top of the forehead. There's some light happening on the brow. And I'm using my kneaded eraser in, in sort of a, like a paintbrush. I can go ahead and pick out the light that's part of the upper eyelid. Strong light right here. Strong light right here in the corner of the upper lip. And the first pass with the, with the kneaded eraser picks up a lot of charcoal. And then it kind of gets clogged up. And then that's a good time that you can start blending if you want to do blending, right? So you pick up that first pass and then you can kind of blend it a little bit with the, with the kneaded eraser. It doesn't keep picking up. But as soon as you uh, mix that charcoal in with the rest of the kneaded eraser, now you're ready for some more lifting. All right? I try to think of the, the the shapes that I'm picking up, and I try to make them a shape rather than a line. Teresa still has her upper lip curl. Uh, so you'll see that little bit of light right on the top of her upper lip. And we'll find the, the highlight on the lower lip. 
Remember, lower lip's got some texture to it usually. So this is a cast shadow, so I'm making it sharper. This is a form shadow or a core shadow, so I'm going to try and keep that blurry. Let's come back in on this side, see if we can't find the eye again. Make that highlight a little stronger. All right, got to work on those eyes. So you can move, uh, you can really move the charcoal around quite a bit. you haven't done anything with uh, too sharply with the point of the uh, of the charcoal There's a strong highlight right here the corner of her eye I want to see the highlight, and this is a good time to bring out the pencil eraser. Just to fine tune those shapes, I can see the top plane of the lower lid here. If it's too bright, I can knock it back. Okay, she's going to take a break and we're going to go five more minutes. We'll do one more session, right? That's two sessions so far. Okay, one more. All right, good. So let's continue here. Let's see what we can do. Blend that out a little bit. Light forward a little bit. I'm going to start using my charcoal pencils uh, just because it's a little easier creating the cast shadow under the upper eyelid. <clears throat> I'm going to darken that um, crease on top of the eye. I feel like I've made some of this a little too dark and I just want to roll that over, roll that edge over a little bit. So having your value scale open next to you will help you kind of figure out some things, you know, how far you want to go with a, with a particular value. <clears throat> I'm running into too many things here that I need to draw and I'm, you know, everything's just getting blocked up uh, uh, with those super dark values. I need to try and create more values in between. Uh, 
And it's a matter of giving it several passes until you get the look that you want. wide of a top plane of the nose. Let's just cut it back a little bit here. And maybe I need to cut it back here too. Let me redraw that highlight. I don't know that it. I don't know that it makes a difference, but I, I, I do know that I've drawn Teresa before, so um, yeah. Lots of times. Before. I mean, it, it it does make it easier, yeah. Um, I mean, some of the things that I that I'm telling you, I'm measuring. I've measured them you know, a dozen times before, but I need to tell you that I'm measuring those things. Otherwise, you won't believe me. You'll think, oh, he doesn't measure. Why should we? It's like a math class. Yeah. A little bit of a core <laughs> shadow here, maybe. I'm by no means an expert on, on drawing Teresa's. Anyway, so, and, and like I said, you know, I takes me a long time to really get a good likeness. I'm going to inch up to it today, but... Remember the, uh, uh, the iris, if you darken the outside of the iris, um, that's usually uh, something that makes people look more attractive. If you make the pupil larger in respect to the iris, it makes them look more attractive. Um, not that attractive is the only thing to go off of, right? There's lots of things that you could, uh, you could try to accentuate. Nice strong highlight in the center of the eye here. A little lighter, the whites of the eye, but I don't want to go to white paper there. And a little reflection in the bottom section of the iris. Uh, so a little lighter section here will make that eye kind of stand out a little more. <clears throat> Other things that you could do is you could draw a little wetness in the eye, some other little highlights. Along the, along the lower lid. A little wetness in the corner of the eye. Just a little extra highlight is what I mean by a little wetness, yeah? Because a, a, little, a little bit of water uh, is going to form a little drop there. And it's going to have a little extra, uh, it's going to look like a, a little wet area. Make that eyelid just a little thicker. So eyelashes are fairly short on the, the bottom lid. And they're going to be coming out from the corner of the bottom lid, just like they come out from the corner of the upper lid. OK, we can put some eyelashes right over the top. Make them go in lots of different direction. Don't just make them all, don't make a sun out of them. Sharpen up that 
reflection there. And you know what? This calls for <clears throat> my uber black. Where's my uber black? OK. So if you want that pupil to really stand out, you've got to give it an extra layer of value here. OK, we can bring that in a couple of other places, maybe. Whiteout. I like to use graphite. So um, graphite has a, um, a reflective quality. Yeah. So if you <coughs> uh, use graphite, it's kind of like a poor man's gold leaf. Okay. Um, you can make the drawing, uh, uh, you know, depending on what angle you're looking at, it looks a little different. Uh, uh, and, and to me, that, that looks exciting. That looks interesting. Um, I haven't used whiteout. I, I think whiteout, uh, the reason I wouldn't use whiteout is because it might start to create a, a, a texture on top of the surface. Whiteout's fairly thick, right? Um, but you might use something like an opaque, um, an opaque paint. Uh, I know comic book artists have all kinds of tricks uh, for creating, uh, bringing, bringing value back, uh, bringing that paper value back. I don't need that pure white necessarily. I mean, I guess we could try it. We could put a nice little dot right on her nose there. Anybody have any white out? Wouldn't you prefer like a white Conti or something? Well, the, the white Conti, uh, I have some, but it, it's just well, not. I'm saying um, instead of white out, which would like sits on top rather than. Yeah. Yeah, you might. But, but you know, the, the white Conti. Uh, even that, you know, kind of kind of looks weird, and, and I don't like to use it just for little bits and pieces because it stands out. It looks blue. You know, now that I when I, when I look at it up close, you know, I'll leave it there. You guys can see for yourself. Uh, it, it's a different tonality than the than the paper. The paper is warm, the charcoal is warm, and the, the that. That white Conti, white pastel, looks um, looks blue. So I'm going to work on the hair a little bit here. And in terms of hair, what we want to do is we want to think of the uh, the overall form of the hair, right? So there's a top plane that's going to be lit. There's a side plane that's going to be a little bit darker. Uh, uh, there's a back plane here. That's going to be darkest. Uh, uh, some of this is going to be quite dark. Um, and, and maybe later on, we'll go ahead and, and we'll put a couple of loose strands of hair, all right? But let's start with uh, some of the highlights that I see, particularly towards the front and center, because I want the front and center of this face to stand out. I don't want the back edge of the head to stand out. I want the front and center to stand out. So I'm going to pick out a couple of highlight shapes. And I like to use, really, either a kneaded eraser or one of these block erasers. And I like to think of it more like, a, like I'm painting that in rather than noodling with the shape too much. OK, so I'm just going to follow the shape of a highlight here that I see. Just slowly bring that forward. Try to make my strongest light be up close to me rather than far away. Uh, here we're getting some hair sort of reaching back 
out into a highlight, although that's probably too strong. And maybe some of it's coming over her shoulders. But that's probably too strong too. So I'm just gonna knock it back a little bit by rubbing my pinky over it, my dirty pinky, okay? Um, just making this just a little bit lighter, not quite a highlight. Want to create a little more separation between the skin and her. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to add a little cast shadow under that uh, hair there. Um, let's go in and do the ear. Don't make the ear stand out too much. It should sink to the back. I'm just going over the light area of the ear. And maybe I will darken the shadow just a touch. Tragus right here. I'm just knocking it back a little bit. I'm going to darken the shadow under her ear. Give that really make that give that a sense that it's going around. Do the same thing here. Give this hair just a little bit more value. And then I will darken the background. On that side. And then, um, we can add a few strands of hair, and this is where your pencil eraser is really good. Not too many. And you can soften them a little bit. They, they shouldn't be too strong. This is overkill. I know what I need. I need some texture on her lower lip. Highlight on the nostril. Make that little pull. And I need a little more highlight on the cheek. just to get that eye socket to sink back a little bit. I think I made that lower lip a little too fat.
give it a core shadow. Okay, so this area here feels kind of flat. Um, I want to make sure I get some overlapping so I kind of get a sense of the different forms one over the other. And adjust the shape just a little bit. shadow here. So I'm trying to bring your attention here. So some of the things on, on this side are going to be a little less rendered. This is going to be a little bit less rendered. Uh, right, and, and given the time that you have, uh, you don't have time to really finish out the whole thing. So, uh, life drawing class is a, um, it's an exp uh, you know, it, it's an experiment in time. Um, if you had a week, yeah, you could really get it right, really finish the whole thing. But we're going to stop right here uh, and um, take a five minute break, and then it'll be your turn unless you have any questions. No? Okay, then let's take five.